My name is Stephen Wolfsey. I'm a professor in the School of Engineering and Applied Sciences and also in the Earth and Planetary Sciences Department. So can you tell us how the carbon cycle works and how trees uh, absorb carbon from the atmosphere? So trees are conducting photosynthesis. They have chlorophyll in their leaves. Chlorophyll can take uh, sunlight and use the energy from the sunlight to um, split up CO2 into sugars and water. Um, and the, the carbon enters the, the tree as, as a simple sugar. It is uh, used for metabolism and it's also used to build structure. So it builds wood. Once the wood is built, the tree grows and eventually uh, the tree dies. And the die, when the tree dies, uh, when the leaves fall off, they go down into the soil and microorganisms chew up that stuff. But they leave behind a, a residue that's high in carbon. So carbon is stored in forests both in the body of the tree, the trunk, the bowl, and also in the soils. In the tropics, most of the carbon is stored in the wood. Um, at higher latitudes in the Arctic, most of the carbon is stored in the soils. So how does climate change affect the carbon storage capacity of trees? So if we think about the high latitudes first, the carbon accumulates in the soils over a very long time. If you look at the age of carbon in, in Arctic soils, it's, a lot of it goes back to the Pleistocene, so tens of thousands of years. Uh, as climate warms up, the microorganisms that chew on uh, soil carbon can become more active. They can get different types of microorganisms and that carbon uh, can be mobilized and turned back into CO2. So one way that climate change affects carbon stored in forests and in tundra and in other um, ecosystems of the north is by mobilizing that carbon that's been essentially frozen or, or stuck in the permafrost for um, for decades out to centuries, out to millennia. Another way that carbon uh, is mobilized by uh, climate warming is in the mid-latitudes where you have forests like the ones in Western North America that are, uh, th those forests are regenerated by fires. So fire is a normal part of the ecosystem. Uh, the forests grow, eventually they reach a certain stage where the forest becomes vulnerable to fire and eventually it burns. As you start to raise the temperatures, the fires can get hotter and they can destroy the forest in a way that um, they could, couldn't happen when it was cooler. And that can lead to essentially a degradation of the forest overall and uh, it turned the forest into grassland. So if you travel from um, from the Arctic toward the central part of North America, you initially are in a boreal forest, which is also a, a cold desert, actually, very little precipitation there, but it's cold enough that you don't have too, too, too much, um, the fires don't come too often and they're not too hot. And so you burn the trees and they grow back. At some point you reach uh, a boundary where there was a prairie boundary. Uh, now it's mostly agriculture. And that represents grassland where the fires came uh, too frequently and too hot. And that um, boundary will tend to want to move north into the boreal forest zone as climate warms and, and uh, ecosystems uh, can dry out more during the summer. When I go down to the tropics, it's a really complicated question. <clears throat> you can have um, higher temperatures leading to hotter fires. They're also destroying tropical forests. Uh, you can also get both more precipitation and longer droughts uh, with climate warming. This is much harder to predict than what's happening in the northern uh, zones and the Arctic zones. Uh, we could expect to see um, some of the tropical forests convert to savanna. You might also see other areas where tropical forests start to grow that, where they weren't before. Another factor, though, is that human beings are exploiting these forests. So human beings are cutting down the forests and it turns out if you wanna look and see what they're being used for, let's say in Brazil, it's mostly being used for agriculture. What are they growing? Is mostly either grass or soybeans, both of which are fed to cattle. So they're basically converting those forests into meat. So what are the implications of deforestation on the carbon cycle generally? 
So deforestation has can put significant amounts of carbon into the atmosphere. Uh, the carbon is stored in tropical forests, uh, largely in the trees themselves. And when you cut them down and burn them and produce pasture or soybeans, then you have much less carbon on each site than you had before. And that amount of carbon is not insignificant compared to the amounts that we're putting into the atmosphere from fossil fuels. It might increase the CO2 concentration in the atmosphere by several tens of parts per million compared to several hundred parts per million that um, we're, we're in the process of introducing from fossil fuels. So it wouldn't become a dominant source, but it will definitely uh, add um, CO2 to the atmosphere. There's another factor though, the, uh, the trees uh, and the forests are very important in producing the climate that you have at the surface. So trees mine the water in the soil, put it back into the atmosphere, it rains again. So they basically drive the hydrologic cycle of rain followed by uh, trees blooming, et cetera, et cetera, and, um, and then some more rain. And when you cut them down, then that cycle is uh, severely disturbed and can change the whole regional climate. So what strategies can be implemented to enhance carbon sequestration in urban areas specifically? So let's reframe that question. Perfect. Uh, so one question that you could ask is, uh, what role do trees play in urban areas in terms of affecting mm -hmm. the climate, in terms of the way people live, uh, et cetera? And trees turn out to be very, very important in what we like to call the surface climate. So when you have a nice leafy area uh, in a city, uh, the temperatures that uh, people experience in their homes and walking around outside will often be five degrees, maybe 10 degrees cooler than in those parts of the city that are all asphalt and you don't have any trees. It might not surprise you to learn that the parts of the city that have trees tend to be the parts that are better off wealthier parts and the parts that don't have trees, which are hotter and to live in. Uh, people also don't have air conditioners in those areas. Those will be the hot spots. And so if you use a heat sensing camera and take a picture of a city from a satellite or an airplane, those hot areas are very often uh, the places where uh, the lower uh, income uh, groups are living and um, suffering under the heat. So the heat island effect is very strongly influenced by um, whether or not you have trees planted there. Trees also uh, have a significant impact on the air quality. So um, if you have uh, uh, trees present, they can remove ozone from the atmosphere, which is a pollutant, <clears throat> and they can also uh, help to filter out uh, particulate pollution, both of which are quite significant in terms of health effects of on people living in cities. So trees are very important in urban environments, not so much for carbon uptake, but more for how they affect the surface climate and the air quality. But what, what happens is when you grow trees in a city, some of them get quite big, mm -hmm. uh, and then they die and you cut them down and they disappear. So they are taking carbon out mm -hmm. of the atmosphere and storing in their trunks and then they're disappearing. But what happens to them after they disappear is that they go into a landfill or something similar and they eventually go back to the atmosphere. So you're not actually taking significant amounts of carbon out of the atmosphere. You couldn't take out the carbon in the atmosphere that's comparable to what's being used in the city to drive the, you know, the heat the homes and make electricity and all the things that you do with energy sources. And the way that you know that is you could ask yourself the question, suppose I couldn't import oil and gas into the city anymore. Could I energize my city by burning the vegetation that's growing around me? And the answer is no, you can't. So they're not, they're not taking up significant amounts of carbon, but boy, are they having a significant impact. People ask is how is uh, climate change affecting uh, fires in let's say in the United States. So there are many things that um, lead to forest fires. For one thing, as I mentioned in an earlier comment, fire is a natural part of most forest ecosystems. So the fact that there are forest fires by itself is, is not a problem. Uh, humans don't like forest fires very much and tend to suppress them. 
and that allows uh, the forest to build up more fuel. So when you do have a forest fire, um, it's hotter and, uh, and more, more damaging. And so that's, that's a problem. And so that's something that one could um, solve by starting to do prescribed burns or um, thin, thinning the forest or harvesting the forest. Uh, but the other thing that happens is that uh, heat waves get hotter during as temperatures rise. There's, that's one of the few things that we could say with considerable confidence. The heat waves are more severe. And when, when the forest, um, when the temperature is higher and the humidity gets low enough, as it will from time to time, you can get really devastating fires that would not be possible if the, if the temperatures were lower. You could still have a fire but it wouldn't burn as hot or as far. So what you currently have happening here in, the, in the North America, in particular in Western um, US, is a very big increase in large fires and in large severe fires compared to 20, 30, 40 years ago. And uh, that, that increase is partly associated with higher temperatures and climate uh, the general trend in climate warming. It's partly associated with legacies of previous forest management. Um, if you go back in time, you can find, particularly at, around the turn of the 20th century, the first couple of decades of the 20th century, very, very large fires in North America, including Eastern North America. And a lot of that had to do with logging. <clears throat> so when you, do, when you do a logging, you cut down the trees, and most of the tree stays where it was because it's not good for you. So you just take the trunk and you leave everything else. And if that material gets dry and uh, ignites, you can have one heck of a forest fire. So there's, there's a bunch of different things that have happened over the last 100 years, 200 years that affect forest fires. Climate warming is one of them. And uh, management and uh, exploitation of the forest is another one. So there's a lot that we can do to manipulate that system to, to improve things, to, to get out of this situation where we have um, very large fires and very uh, large amounts of smoke inundating uh, where people live every year. Uh, there's a lot that we can do. We may not be able to affect the climate part of that very much, but we can certainly affect the way we manage the forests.